It's Morphin Time! If you're looking for Shaman King merchandise out of Japan, check out Hobby Link Japan using the link in the description below to help support the channel. Hello, this is Sanat here, and today we're taking a look at the Figma Yo Asakura from Shaman King. Now, this may be sort of more inspired by the recent Shaman King remake anime that was done in 2021, uh, which was sort of remaking the anime adaptation of the Shaman King manga in a new, uh, fresh way. And you know what? I quite enjoyed it. Even though it probably went by incredibly fast and needed to slow down a few times, it did get through the entire manga story, which was much more than the original anime had done. But this is basically just Yo Asakura from any iteration of Shaman King, be it the manga or the two anime adaptations, and he looks cool. So we're going to get this guy opened up here in a minute, but I do like the box. I like the bright orange and green uh, color style. It's always just nice to see boxes pop like that. He does come with all the standard stuff you'd expect for this look of Yo. Uh, no worries yet if we're going to get you know the shaman fight outfit version of him or if it's just going to be this more casual attire but let's take a look at him and see if he's worth having all right so here is figma yo out of his packaging now yo asakura is a very laid-back character while he's determined to win the shaman fight to become the shaman king and such when he's not really training or fighting or hardly even training uh he's pretty laid back this is a this is such a great character design because it gives you a lot of insight into his personality for example uh, Yo is not going to be tied down by laces or shoes. This man wears sandals. Uh, yeah, he is really, he's a really relaxed kid, honestly. Uh, like, look at this. He's not even, like, wearing an undershirt. It's just a school uniform shirt, but he doesn't even bother to button it up. He is so laid back and relaxed as a character until it's time to fight. Uh, in which case, he, he really does get into gear. Um, as you can see... His face, I think, is just perfect. This is his default face. Uh, this does come with multiple faces, like a lot of Figmas do. He looks just, you know, kind of laid back and lazy. He has headphones that he always wears, even if he doesn't ever put them over his ears hardly. Uh, it's one of those weird character traits. And I appreciate Figma for putting in all the silver details on the headphones. Uh, from the back, pretty plain. Uh, this is one of those, you know, it's a basic design because uh, the manga artist and the anime artist are going to be drawing this design over and over and over again. So making it simpler does work pretty good. Uh, one of the most interesting details has always been this necklace he wears uh, because he wears this in any of his outfits that he's seen in the series with. Uh, uh, this is particularly the early kind of yo look uh, just kind of his default appearance he got kind of more of a battle suit when the shaman fight really started uh ramping up but i kind of like that we start with this one it's kind of iconic to the character and like i said it has a lot of his personality in it uh which is pretty nice and so figmas in general are kind of they're they're very lightweight um there's like no heft to him whatsoever this also means he can get some really dynamic poses uh on a stand because you don't have to worry about him like collapsing the weight under him and in comparison to figure arts the joints are a lot softer and the plastic's a lot softer but i kind of appreciate how smooth some of these joints work and let's talk about them so articulation wise uh, his head does pivot forward pivots back uh, it moves left and right pretty good like you can get kind of a, a really good head tilt on him there uh, pretty good tilt up as well so that's pretty nice. Uh, Shoulder-wise, they move out. They do move 360. They do rotate up at the shoulder. Elbow bends, rotate at the elbow. Wrist uh, swivels, pivots ups and downs, that kind of thing. The torso can crunch forward uh, pretty far. Uh, pretty far crunch forward on that, as well as the lower ball joint uh, on the waist, which helps as well. So you can move side to side, which gives them a lot of range. Yeah, hips that move out like this, hips that move forward, hips that move back, hips pull down a little bit so they can actually kick up pretty good. Uh, you do start to see this kind of like natural curve. It's part of the design, part of uh, just the Figma nature. And this whole crotch piece is an overlay sort of rubber thing. So I'd, I'd be careful posing them in certain directions because that might get stuck. Uh, his knees do bend. Even though it's a single joint, it moves pretty far, which is pretty impressive. He's got ankles that pivot forward, back, left, right, and then also side to side. And that's pretty nice. Now, what's kind of weird about Figmas is that a lot of the joints you can actually just pull out of their sockets. Uh, in some cases, like this one, it will be to swap parts. And in other cases, you can just pull them to adjust them. So like if the knee's not moving far enough for you, you can pull it out a little bit and it goes a little bit farther. It's just kind of the way these are designed and structured that that's just kind of how that works out. Now, of course, he does have all of this articulation, but does he have any accessories? Well, of course he has accessories. He's an import figure from Japan. Almost all of them come with a ton of accessories. So let's start rolling through them, beginning with his hands. One of the things I really like about Figmas is all the hands come on these hand racks, which allows you to just have them at the ready and good to go. And they always come 
come with an extra wrist joint, which is, I think, really nice. It's easy to swap out in case uh, the wrist does get broken for any reason. Usually I have not had issues, but I like the option being there. Yo's default hands are a pair of fists, and he also includes a pair of open slash relaxed hands. The rest of the hand lineup is accessory specific with hands to hold the sword, hold the sword in a different position, as well as holding uh, the memorial tablets. So we will look at these with the accessories themselves. Now he does have swappable faces, and this is a little horrifying, but it always, uh, we just have to work with it. So you just pull the face of the hair off of him in front, and then pull the face off, and then you can put another face on him. In this case being the smiling face, which I think just, again, fits his personality so well. This, this guy is, he's so laid back until he has to actually fight. And of course, speaking of actually fighting, uh, swapping it again, the other option is a more intense action face, uh, which looks pretty great. He's very intense, and that's actually also part of his personality there. Yo does come with an optional forearm, which has the oracle bell attached. Now, this was important to the shaman fight as it helped keep track of who was fighting who and how many points each fighter had had. So it's really cool that this was included because he did start his uh, shaman fight training uh, in this outfit. So having the oracle bell here is a nice inclusion. Now, in order to swap this out, you have to pull the elbow joint out from the uh, socket here. And I'll try to do this on camera once. If this doesn't succeed, we'll just, we'll just do it off camera. There we go. Okay, so once we have the arm out, we can just pop the other arm in that has the oracle bell attached and then you can just put like any hand on the end of it and that gives you a different look and i, I like the way that that is done uh because yeah that gives him that option i'm gonna leave it on him because i think that just is very appropriate for the figure so naturally yo does include the memorial tablet this is a tablet that contains the spirit of his spirit partner amita maru it's kind of a you know simple piece of black plastic but he does have this hand for it it can sort of stand on a table uh it's a little it's a little too light to try to to actually balance it up because uh, it does stand like this in the show but it doesn't really stand it's pretty much just for holding because yeah, it's just going to fall over. So of course, because the spirit of Amida Maru is inside that tablet, you also get a spirit of Amida Maru in the spirit ball form. And it's really cool. I think it's really great the way they've detailed him out. He's got that very intense expression than he is in this form. The uh, interesting part is the swords had to be pegged in here and the back of the hair flame thing also had to be pegged in. So there's a little bit of assembly on Amida Maru here. But he looks pretty great. Uh, this is kind of the uh, spirit form that is ready to be integrated into the shaman, and that's honestly kind of a cool inclusion. What's also really cool is there's a stand included. So there's a little uh, spot there, and you get this kind of crazy stand, and you plug it in, and now you've got a stand for Amida Maru. But you're probably wondering, where does that clip go? Well, that's where this comes in. So this is a uh, standard for pretty much every Figma. Uh, it's a Figma stand. You got this kind of arm that bends in three places. There's an extra like peg here that can plug into a body or you can add this to plug into a shorter peg and just have a little bit taller of an arm. Uh, they always put the copyright information on the bottom of these, which is pretty nice. And so basically, yo, uh, he does have a peg in the back of his uh, neck there and we just line it up, squeeze it on. And then now you've got a stand for yo. And like I said, the figures are kind of light. So you get sort of that uh, easier to pose nature. Now, of course, uh, you know, you want to get Amita Maru in his spirit form attached to Yo here, but you got these three points that bend. You got that ball joint there, but more importantly, this clip at the end connected to a ball joint will clip to the arm of Yo's stand. So that way you can have it floating around Yo. Uh, what's also cool is because of the positioning, you can line it up so that you can get kind of Yo holding the spirit. Uh, it's better to do this off camera because I'm trying to do it uh, speedily here, but you know, you can kind of have Yo balancing Amita Maru like that. Uh, so you have that stand support, even if you don't want to try to balance it in Yo's hand. And that allows for more options of it kind of floating around Yo himself. Now, of course, when he does integrate with Amita Maru, he does have use of a sword, which is also, of course, included. So here is Yo with a sword in the sheath. Um, one note on Amita Maru, I've noticed as I've been doing the review, he does have this ball joint that's supposed to keep, you know, it's supposed to be able to free float. It's it's not supported enough in most angles, so you have to like be really careful on how you pose Amita Maru and then know it's it's probably gonna drip. He's he's a solid piece of plastic and the, the stand isn't as stable. But here we have Yo's sword in the sheath, which looks really nice. Uh so we got a set of hands that hold the sheath, but then also the top part of this pulls out so that you can get the full sword form for Yo's sword. Instead of having a inserting sheath and making the sheath wider, 
they just have a removable handle. And now with his sword drawn, Yo is ready for combat. And honestly, it's kind of cool how we have multiple steps to kind of get here. We got sort of different accessories to have Yo in a different state of mind and a state of being. And it does have the nice action figure features you'd expect, like, of course, the sword. Uh, it's pretty cool, and I really do like the way that the overall display turns out with Amida Maru floating behind, beside him. Uh, of course, you can have Amida Maru completely uh, disconnected, but kind of like the two of them being together. Uh, but honestly, it turns out for a pretty great looking action figure all things considered. There is some, of course, Figma weirdness with some of the way the joints work, but in general, I do really appreciate the way this figure turned out. Another nice thing about Figmas is they include plastic bags. Like, all of the Figmas include these. It's not anything that complicated, but it's kind of nice that you can just open up this plastic bag and then just stick, like, the sheath sword in there, or a hand, or a face, or just the whole hand rack, or the memorial tablet. And then you just got all your parts nice in a bag and not have to worry about, like, keeping the box around all the time. And I really appreciate that. So size-wise, Yo is pretty good size for a Figma, uh, but he's not super big. Here he is with the Figma Yami Yugi. Figure this is a good comparison. You know, Fox Box days, uh... You know, four kids days as well. Uh, for those of you watching anime in the early 2000s in uh, the US especially, these two would always air near each other. But anyways, uh, Yugi here of course is a little bit taller. Yami Yugi should be. So Yo is the size of like whatever mid-teen that he should be. Um, and it pretty looks, it looks pretty good. I always like, that's kind of the fun part about Figmas. They do a lot of the anime characters that other companies haven't. So it's kind of nice to have like Yugi and Yo hanging out together on a shelf. Here's another uh, 2000s anime icon, Motoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. I can see aesthetically they're a lot different, but they kind of go together. It's kind of neat. And I especially like the way that Figmas come with their own stands because it kind of gets everybody on the same playing field. And I do like that quite a bit. Now, for those wondering, uh, comparison to American action figure lines. Here is a Marvel Legends figure. Here's the most recent Spider-Man. So you can see Yo looks a little bit short. Uh, this is supposed to be an adult Peter Parker, so, you know, maybe that is scale for you and works well. And then here he is with the anime heroes War Greymon, uh, which you can kind of see, surprisingly, don't look too bad next to each other. Again, 2000s anime, a uh, little reunion here. Here is Yo with Dragon Star's Ultimate Gohan, just seeing an idea of that line comparison. And here he is with SH Figuarts Naruto Uzumaki. Uh, Figmas and Figuarts kind of run the same scale, so take that as you will. Here he is next to a Blu-ray of the English dubbed version of Shaman King. Uh, as you can see, he is shorter than a Blu-ray case. And here he is with the final volume of the Viz release of the manga, which wasn't the final final volume and actually didn't know the ending of the story until the new anime, so... How about that? So overall, I really like Figma Yo Asakura. It's nice to get a Shaman King figure, especially one that has all these accessory loadouts, and I hope we get more. I know Anna is coming out in September, and I have her on pre-order, but we don't know anybody else beyond that. It'd be nice to get Ren, Horo Horo, pretty much anybody. Uh, it's just cool designs of cool characters, and it's nice that Shaman King is kind of getting its due after being uh, kind of obscure for several years. So I'm really happy to see that, and I'm really happy with this figure, and I'd highly recommend getting it if you can. Uh, but that pretty much does it for the review. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Hit subscribe and the notification bell. There's definitely future videos coming up. And in the comments below, tell me your favorite Shaman King character if you've seen it. If you've never seen Shaman King, let me know that as well. Also, be sure to check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for anime news and more. My awesome graphic designer on Twitter at darkclaw 643 And until next time, this is Sad Out saying goodbye.